y'all so it's finally here the our world today daily guidance oracle card um presentation i know i've been talking about this for about a week now i finally got to getting it done so here guys i'm going to discuss the cards um i'm going to discuss uh the deck pretty much the system of the deck how it works and all that good stuff so if you guys are already owners of this deck, you can get more of a feel as to how to work with these cards. Um, and also for those of you who are considering getting the deck, perhaps this will um, influence you in a positive way, of course, to go ahead and get the cards uh, so that you can add them to your collection. And for those of you who are just now finding out about my deck of cards, guys. This is the Our World Today Daily Guidance Oracle Cards created by yours truly. Um, I, I did all the artwork for this deck and I think it's a very beautiful deck. Right now the deck is available on Amazon. Okay, so here what you guys are looking at is the 57 cards that come with the deck. Um, I don't want to take myself off the screen. You guys could actually see a lot of the cards. I don't really know how to work this thing too well. But pretty much what you're looking at is all the cards. Okay. Um, next slide, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the guidebook formats. Okay. So with this deck, guys, what I did was I separated the books because the mini booklet which is a little bit too many for me to pack all of what's in the full length guidebook into. So what I did was I turned it into a keyword guidebook. And keywords are designed to um, pretty much help you get some type of intuitive uh, code or message or something like that. Like usually with, with keywords, what you do is you build on them with your readings. Now, if you guys want a full in-depth um interpretation of the cards you guys want to go in on the symbolisms and all of that you will definitely have to purchase the uh full length guidebook and you can get that in paperback hardback i'm sorry i always say hardback you can get that in paperback hardcover or ebook format now the special thing about the hardcover is that it comes with some pretty cool activities guys and these activities are designed to help you, the reader, not only with your readings, but with personal development as well. So I think that's really dope. Now here is pretty much a card. Okay, I want to show you guys how to look at the cards. So a card comes with a number and a title. You also have in the center there the image. Now, all of the images are symbolic or they're full of some type of symbolism, even if it's just the color of the person's shirt or um, what's in the picture, everything's symbolic and you can build off of every little thing that you see in a card. Okay, so let's go over this card, for example. This is the first card, Transformation. Now, the green, the, excuse me, guys, the green grass in this card symbolizes abundance and experience health, jealousy, and naivety. The blue sky that you see is symbolic of freedom, imagination, and represents in intuition and uh, sincerity. The, the uh, portal that you see above the child's head, which is shaped like a um, coiled snake, that represents infinity or infinite cycles of birth and death, okay? The yellow dress and shirt that the two uh, females are wearing on this image represents sunshine, youthfulness, optimism, happiness, good times, and it's associated with the goddess Oshun. Now the Barbie doll that the kid is playing with represents perfection, adulthood, conditioning, uh, fear of having children and or a desire to have children. So again, everything's symbolic, like the playing blocks. They spell out the word cab, C-A-B. C is the third letter of the alphabet. A is the first letter of the alphabet. B is the second letter, which adds up to the number six of the sixth cent. Okay. Again, you can take this and you can build off of what I'm telling you, or you can utilize your own wisdom and knowledge as to what something is and build more. Um, as you get to know the cards and you begin to work with this deck. Okay. It's really, really dope. It's really, really deep. 
like for instance, the clouds represent the celestial realm, represents in some cases depression, and they could also represent secrets that are untold. The caterpillar on the little girl's shirt represents vulnerability, patience, potential, and good luck. Whereas the butterfly represents rebirth, hope, change, stuff like that. Okay, universal change. It symbolizes that we are all here in our own way to make some type of change or to bring some type of change to the world. Okay, so that's that. I hope that that makes sense, guys. If you have any questions, be sure to um, leave them in the comment section. Now here we're going to talk about the card backs, okay? So with the card backs, not only did I have you guys uh, vote on what you guys wanted to see as the card back, I um, did some research and I got some really, really cool information on keys and what keys mean and what they could symbolize and all that good stuff. So the cool thing also about this deck, guys, you can also read the card, the card backs. Let's say, for instance, you get an upright key. That represents access, unlocking, authority, opening, power, discovery, security. It could represent um, opportunity, interest, or control. Entrance or control. So let's say that you have a car, you pull a car, and you pull it upright. You can use all of these keywords to further interpret what a car is trying to tell you. Let's say it's the transformation car. Um, it could represent an open opportunity for change what I'm saying like is is deep like that or this could be giving someone authority to change something in your house change something in your life change something on your car change like you, you you see where this is going now when you see that a key is reversed if you want to read reverse cards I know some people don't don't read reverse cards then you'll see that um keywords for reverse keys um indicate deny something being locked Losing control it represents potential, rejection in some cases, hidden aspects, closing, missed opportunities, or secret. Okay, so again, remember what I said in terms of you being able to utilize the upright and reverse key that you see on the back. Okay, that's pretty much the cosmic key. It represents the key to the universe or unlocking the mysteries of the universe, basically tapping into your higher self. Okay. Also, guys, keys represent just in general openings and closing, closings, uh, freedom or repetition. I'm sorry, <laughs> freedom or repression, security or insecurity. Now, the key in ancient times was the uh, the unk. See on the right side of the screen, the unk symbolizes um, ancient kept, ancient Kemet. Sim, it's the ancient Kemet symbol of life. Okay, it's the key of life and eternal life. Um, it represents life or breath of life. It's the key of denial, and it's said to be the first original key that symbolizes the union of man and woman, or man and woman. So. I just wanted to go in a little bit on the back of the cards. If you guys um, want, you can ask questions or if you have comments about that, even in the comment section. All right, so next we're going to go into the two types of cards in this deck. So again, there's 57 cards, and the 57 cards are divided into two groups of 27. Now, the first group represent the DFCs, aka the Divine Feminine card. These cards represent things that are spiritual. Uh, they embody subjectivity, internal energy, archetypes, nurturing, wisdom, all things feminine. Okay? They're pretty much grouped into the Divine Feminine. Doesn't mean that they can't be masculine sometimes. It doesn't mean that... Um, they don't sometimes correlate with masculinity as well, but usually these cards are things that start from the internal essence and are manifested into the external, um, yet in a different form, if you kind of get what I'm saying. 
So those are those 27. Now the next 27 are the DMCs. All right, these are the divine masculine parts. They represent the physical, things that are external, objectivity, situations, logic, discipline, all that good masculine stuff. Okay, so again, doesn't necessarily mean that these parts can't sometimes embody or um, reflect feminine energy, but they are part of the divine masculine group, aka the DMC. Next, we have the protagonist, and that's pretty much, yeah, the divine masculine and the divine feminine card. If you look at the uh, box when you guys get your cards, you'll see that um, the cards are pretty much divine masculine and divine feminine energies, okay? So this is symbolic of tapping into both energies prior to waking up. You basically have to do that. You have to tap into your divine energy your divine feminine energy as well as your divine masculine energy so this is basically symbolic of harmony once those two things meet as a uh, being and that's for everyone on their journey in any way shape or form okay so this represents unity harmony oneness divine connection totality and alignment all right so remember the divine feminine card represents like venus energy doesn't necessarily always have to be venus but it's Venus associated, and then divine masculine is Mars. You can see Venus in the background of her image. You can also see Mars in the background of his image. Together, they are union, one, oneness. Next, we're going to talk about the cosmic cards, guys. So these cards, and what's special about these cards is that um, they represent the elements, okay? The demigod card represents water and fire, whereas the spirit guide card represents earth and air. These cards activate slash um, represent godlike power, deities, the higher self or the lower self, activated potential or divine presence in some way, shape, or form, okay? So let's start with Let's start with the demigod here to your left. You'll see that this card is symbolic of God, the divine, the higher self personified. This card represents working, uh, the working through, like God working through you, the divine working through you, your higher self working through you um, as you or someone else for a higher or lower manner. Now, what's required with this energy here while doing readings is knowing, which is the air element, and manifesting, which is the earth element. So it's almost like, although this card represents water and fire, you still have to ignite earth and air, okay? But remember, these are etheric, or this represents the ethers, because these are the cosmic cards, okay? Um, this card here represents Neptune, You'll see the blue in the background and the red represents Mars or symbolic for Mars energy. So Neptune and Mars. And then the deity slash energy associated with, or deities or energy associated with the color blue, red, purple, or black. Now, if you get the full length book, guys, and you look at the definitions of the cards, you'll understand this presentation a lot better. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, go over the Jimmy God again. I think that the camera stopped recording. But anyways, guys, let's uh, finish this. Okay, so again, com cosmic cards, okay, they represent um, God-like power deities, the higher soul, lower soul, potential divine presence. So the Jimmy God card uh, rules water and fire. It's associated with Neptune and Mars. Deities or energies associated with the color blue, red, purple, or black. 
All right, this card is God or the divine, the higher self personified, working through you as you or as someone for a higher or lower manner. It could be someone around you, anybody. Like right now, that, that dog <laughs> that's barking in the background. Dog, D O G, that's God backwards. Anyways, okay. This card requires uh, knowing. So it requires you to activate the air element and manifesting, which requires you to activate the earth element. So although, again, this card represents fire and water, it's still required for one to have wisdom and um, to be able to utilize that wisdom in terms of this physical realm, okay? Or to, to use logic or just period, just things of the air realm, okay? Knowing, using the mind. Okay, um, now the uh, spirit guy card, you're right, uh, represents earth and air energy. Okay, it's um, astrological aspects, transits, and influences. That's pretty much what this is. Astrological aspects, transits, and influences. The color yellow is symbolic here. It represents Venus and Saturn, okay? Um, as you can see on her shirt, that's the arrow of, uh, I'm sorry, that's the symbol of fire when it comes to the elements. That's the fire symbol. So 